Today coming up, the top tips every music producer should know about compression. Hey guys, so welcome to the studio. Today I'm, I'm extremely tired to be honest. As you know, yesterday I started resetting up my entire computer, installing logic and everything to be able to work faster here in the studio. So far everything is running fine again. It just takes way longer than I thought. But I just want to set up myself for, for the next year, for 2018, to be ready. I redid the studio, rebuilt the acoustics, now I redid my computer so that I can be efficient and just start right away into the next year, make new tracks, promote them, release them and hopefully gain as many plays as I had last year or this year on Spotify. I think since I started doing these vlogs, I, I got like to six, seven, eight million plays in total on all of my tracks. That's really just amazing. So again, thanks to all of you. Today coming up the second video about compression, a little bit more advanced, because I was cheap a couple of years ago and I bought complete 10. I didn't want to spend the extra, I think 100 euros to get it on a hard drive, so I bought the CD version or DVD version. <sighs> 13 DVDs installing them. And the worst part about it, thanks to Apple, my MacBook doesn't have a DVD or CD drive. So the only way to do it is by using my very old G5 Connect it to the monitor, hope that it still runs, haven't used it in a year or so, and then install all of those DVDs over Wi-Fi. Yeah, this will be annoying, but I will spend the time making a great video for you and, um, and maybe playing a little bit of Hearthstone. So let's get right into it. My first tip for compression, the little bit more advanced stuff, yesterday we clarified what it is, how it works and when to use it. Today I want to go deeper into like misconceptions and things you shouldn't do when you compress. And the first one is definitely overusing fast attack. A lot of people love fast attack because the compressor is immediately reacting to the transients. But this way you're actually cutting off like the attack of the sounds, like the initial crispy punchy thing and it might actually ruin your mix or your sounds a little more. It makes them go more into the background. And actually you want to keep them in the foreground. So for example, like your main guitar, don't have to attack too fast. Let the compressor have a little bit of time to react to the transients so that the transients cut through and then the rest of the signal can be compressed. Second tip, almost the same, but not for the attack, it's for the release. A lot of people have the release way too slow. And this can, for example, on a drum track, actually ruin your entire groove. The release just takes too much time. You should set it shorter and get it like synced up with the tempo of the track. It's hard to explain, you just have to listen to it and find like the sweet spot where the release should actually stop. In general, I think it's better to set it as fast as possible or just really go with the flow of the track, but don't make it too long. The next tip is for pros, but also for people that are starting to incorporate compression into their music. Don't overuse it. Don't put it on everything. It's not needed, especially not if you're working in the box. Be careful to not make it actually worse. So definitely A and B test it. Make sure that you get the volume right so that whenever you bypass the compressor, the volume stays the same so that you can actually listen to what the compressor is doing to the sound. And be even way more careful if you put a compressor on your mastering chain. I I hear a lot of tracks where I know that someone went really wild with the compressor on the mastering just to make the track louder or whatever. Please don't do it. My compressor, for example, on my mastering chain, which I anyways get rid of before mastering because the mastering engineer has a nice vintage analog compressor. I just have it set so that it's maybe doing like one to 3 dB of gain reduction. No more than that. Don't treat your entire song like vocals and put like 20 dB of gain reduction on it. It will just sound mushy and, and make it worse. The next tip is actually to, to not really use the compressor to think if you actually really need it. For example, on vocals, sometimes the dynamic range is so big that using a compressor will just make the noise floor go up and squeeze the louder parts so much that it sounds awkward. So cut them, split them into two and just do it by automating them or use a plugin like the Waves Vocal Rider, for example. It does like the automation for you. And then of course you can still use a compressor. You just then don't have to compress that much and get a way more natural sound. Usually when I wanna go for a compressed sound, especially on drums, 
I use parallel compression. It's very easy. You just heavily over compress and then dial down the mix to maybe 5%. So you have your original sound, 5% of the same sound, but really hard compressed so that it sounds way more compressed than it actually is. You get a nice crisp sound, works extremely good on, on drums. Just try it out for yourself. I have it on my drum bus every single time. Also, please, as always, don't use the solo button too much. I mean, yes, for the initial setting up your compressor, you can use it, listen to the vocals solo, but definitely do the finer adjustments in the mix. That's the only thing that counts, what the song sounds like at the end with everything else playing at the same time. No one on this planet will ever listen to your single individual track solo, so just don't worry about what they sound like soloed. That's it with the first part of tips. I will now take care of reinstalling 13 DVDs onto my computer in the slowest way possible. And I'm pretty sure in the meantime, I can come up with a couple more tips for you that have to do with compression. Wow, but all of the plugins are running again. I registered all of them, put in all of the codes, logic is back on track my projects work it seems a little faster but i'm still not really sure i will i will test it further but what i can definitely say is i got so much more disk space available i have like 500 gigabyte it was always packed and now i got 135 gigabyte more space on the computer but anyways let's get back to compression i got a couple more tips i use quite a lot of vintage compressors emulated vintage compressors just for the coloring the special sound that they have for example a lot of times on drums a vintage compressor will just differently treat your top end it will kind of get rid of it make it like crisp and nice and just sound a little bit more natural you can also try and use like tape emulating plugins some vintage compressors even have a switch where you can add the noise that they were generating or some hum i think that's not really necessary but still nice that you have the option if you really want to go full for that vintage sound by far the most important tip is to definitely try out what compression is doing to different kinds of material please after this video open up your DAW try it out on your newest track see what it does listen to it really carefully because i see a lot of people that just use compression or use compression presets don't use them because compression is like too dependent on the source material it won't get you really anywhere you just have to learn to listen to what the compression is doing this takes a lot of time this takes a lot of experience and i know a lot of pros in their tutorials tell you yeah to get those fat nice sound use compression but they're doing it for like 10 years plus they're very specialized and if they say that compression has a big effect it's maybe like one to five percent i can bet you if you remove all of the compression on any song that was ever released it will be mostly still be the same song so if you're a beginner please don't focus too much on compression it's not that important maybe for things that you record into your daw you might need it a little to check the dynamics especially on vocals but don't slap it on everything and think it will improve anything it might make things even worse especially if you don't know what you're doing and definitely focus more on songwriting arrangement good melodies good sound design good mixing like just getting the levels right and the EQing. All of these things are way more important than compression. Because honestly, if I listen to a song, I would never say something like, oh, if they would have just compressed it differently. It's usually the songwriting, the arrangement and these kind of things where the mistakes happen and where you can have like the biggest improvement to your songs. And if you one day reach the point where you are satisfied with all of these things and don't even know what to improve anymore, then please get into compression, get into vintage compression, parallel compression, all these kind of things and have fun with it, trying to figure out which setting is the best. I think that's already the vlog. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you. Let me know what you think about compression. Do you use it a lot or do you not use it at all? What's your opinion? Are people overusing it? Are people using it too much without knowing what it actually does? Just leave a comment down below and we will see us hopefully back tomorrow here in the studio finally going back to making music and not installing stuff and trying to find codes for plugins that i bought years ago really really annoying i hope it was worth it I've gone on my way back to you. I know
you're doing good 